It's that time again. It's time for another Friday Sews. Hi, my name is Sarah and my channel is Naughty Gnome Crafts. Welcome. My channel is all about sewing and styling a handmade wardrobe. In today's video, I'm going to share with you what I've been working on this week, what my plans are for next week, and then I have a fun discussion topic at the end that we will get into. So what did I sew this week? As I stated in my July plans video, I kind of threw it in there as sort of an extra. I decided that I really needed to make a couple more active wear sets because I have recently increased my days that I work out to six days a week and I did not have enough clothing to cover me for a whole week so I was having to do laundry in the middle of a week because obviously when you wear workout clothes you can't re-wear them. You need to wash them every single time because that's just gross. So um, I needed to um, add a couple more sets to my wardrobe so that I wouldn't have to do laundry multiple times a week. Uh, so that's exactly what I did. So I decided to kind of challenge myself in one way and make it simple for myself in another way. So I chose a sports bra pattern that I've made a couple of times before. It's the Sew Your Happy Liz Bralette and I made it as a sports bra and I also made it as a bikini top. And then I chose a pattern that is new to me that I have not made before and that is the Green Style Creations Stride Tights. And I made the shorts version. So I decided to do kind of a little assembly line type setup and I made the bras first and then I made the shorts and I sewed them in tandem so that they would be finished at the same time. And I'll just kind of like uh, pull, show them to you on the camera and then I'll put some pictures and, and possibly video later. But here's the first bra. I used a really bright fuchsia pink on the front and then I had a scrap of this gray on the back and then this band. The printed fabric that you're going to see is um, from Spoonflower and it's their Sport Lycra. And this was the fabric that I purchased that was designed by Natita of Sew Natural Dane for her Black History Month Pattern Designers Challenge. I bought a yard of that fabric and I've used it in all of the pieces. So it kind of ties them all together. So that's, yeah, I think first I'll just show you the pieces and then we'll talk about the, the fabric and the patterns. So this was the first bra. This was the version that I've made two other times. And then for the second bra, I decided to go for the other view. So the second view of the Liz bralette has this little crossover detail on the side. I don't know how clearly that's going to show up, but again, I'll, I'll insert some pictures so you, with it on so you can see what it looks like. But yeah, there's a crossover side. And for this version, I did um, a scrap of some fabric that I got from Blackbird Fabrics on the front. And then I did the Sport Lycra from Swoonflower on the back. And then the band is just the, the same. Um, oh, I need to trim a thread. Uh, it's the same Blackbird fabrics. And then for the shorts, I used the pink and the gray on one version with the Sport Lycra on the band. And I did not do a ton of top stitching, and we'll get to why. But here's the one of the versions of the shorts. And then the other one. I did not use the blue for this one, I just used the pink and the Sport Lycra, and I did do some decorative top stitching on this with my rainbow serger thread. So those are the four pieces that I made. Um, the tops went together fairly easily. When I inserted the clear elastic, I did the burrito method to put the sports bras together with the lining, and when I inserted the elastic, I pulled it a little bit tighter than I have in the past. And so when it's not on the body, it looks really wavy and it doesn't really look that good, but I actually really like the way that it fits when it's on. It feels like there's nice support there, so I'm really glad that I did that. For the shorts, there's no clear elastic in them except in the waistband. I did go ahead and insert clear elastic at the top of the waistband just to help keep the waistband up. And I've done that for other leggings and uh, bike shorts that I've made before, and it's worked really well. So the stride tights do have some options. And so um, in addition to obviously doing the shorts version, I added the contoured waistband and I did the ultra high rise. But in the future, I actually think that I would make the regular high rise because I do find that the ultra high rise is a little bit taller than I really want it to be. I think that the regular high rise is gonna be perfect. I didn't add any pockets to these shorts because I just work out at home, I don't leave the house, so I don't have a need for pockets, so I just skipped that step. The instructions for both patterns were really clear and they went to together fairly simply um, until I got to the cover stitching, which I will get to that in a minute. Um, but there was actually on the, this uh, Liz bralette with the crossover, there was like one tricky part where it says there's supposed to be a notch, but on the actual pattern piece, to me, it was not that clear where the notch was. 
So I didn't realize that there was supposed to be a notch and I didn't cut it. So it took me some trial and error to figure out how much those sides are supposed to overlap. I actually stitched it and then tried it on and it was like really loose and gappy under the arms. So I had to rip it out and then uh, cross it over tighter and restitch it. So I did eventually get there in the end. And when I looked at my pattern piece, I did like eventually see the notch. I'm like, oh, there's the notch. But just, for, just to be warned, if you use this pattern, um, I think the notch markings could be made a little bit clearer. Um, but other than that, it was smooth sailing with the surging part. Now me and my cover stitch were kind of frenemies. Sometimes when I use it, it, everything goes smoothly, it's all wonderful, and sometimes it just does not want to behave. So actually, initially, I had a good uh, cover stitch day. So when I finished up this pair of shorts, I did the hems and it all went really, really smoothly and it looks nice. I did the reverse cover stitch so that the looper thread is on top and it has that nice decorative touch. And so um, the legs went really well. And so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add some decorative top stitching to the, the waistband. And so I did that and I think it looks really nice and it's nice and stretchy um, and it moves with your body, so that's great. And then when I went to do the second pair, I did the legs and on the second leg, I did not quite line up my stitching so that, you know, it, it wasn't like a perfect circle here. It kind of like veered off a little bit. And I was like, should I leave it? I mean, it's on the inside of the leg. And I'm like, no, I should rip it out and make it better. So I ripped that, just that little part back and then I went to cover stitch over it again to make it more even. <sighs> <laughs> and the fabric got sucked down into my throat plate and the thread had actually wrapped around the looper several times and it was stuck in the machine like so far down that the only way that I could get it out was to cut it. So I had to end up cutting a hole in my shorts in order to get it out of the machine and then I had to like go in with tweezers and get all of the little thread nests out and then rethread the whole thing and it was just a total nightmare and I was just kicking myself for like why couldn't I just leave well enough alone like it's good enough why did I have to be like no it has to be perfect so um, I was very frustrated by that and I ended up like setting it aside and just leaving it for the night and then coming back to it in the morning but I did come up with a solution and that was just to cut off the part with the hole and, and re-hem it because I had already finished these shorts. I could try them on and see what the length was like. And I was like, okay, if I have to cut another, you know, one and a quarter inches off the bottom, it'll be fine. It'll be a little bit shorter, but they're not too short. So I don't know if you can tell or not, but when I hold them up together, you will see that the, the shorts on top are shorter than the shorts on the bottom. And that's because that's where I had to cut off the hole. So the second time around, um, I you know went to do the hems again. They're not absolutely perfect. There's some little wonkiness with it, but I was not messing with it. I was like, they're fine, it's done. And I didn't do any more decorative stitching. I'm like, no, we're done with this. We're gonna put the cover stitch away and these are done. So um, it was a little bit of a journey to get there, but I am really glad that I made this set. I actually think that the fabrics are just like such a fun compliment. They're really bright and happy. And I liked that I used these, um, scraps that I already had in my stash because actually these tops will mix really nicely with pieces that I've already made from these fabrics in the past. So I, it's almost like I have a little bit of an active wear capsule wardrobe. I can like wear all the pieces interchangeably and I'm super happy that I now have enough active wear clothing that I can work out my six days a week and I can do laundry once a week and that's it. So I feel pretty good about that and I don't think that I'll need to make more active wear until it gets colder and then I'll probably want to add some more like full length leggings. But until then, for definitely through the summer, I should be all set. So I'm really, really happy that I took the time to do that, even if it was a little bit of a hassle. So what's next on my cutting table? If you guys will recall from my plans video, I showed this fabric from Rifle Paper Company that I bought from fabric.com. It's one yard of 44 inch wide uh, rayon lawn, I think it is. And it's a really gorgeous fabric and I had forgotten that the fabric is super narrow and I only got a yard so I wasn't sure what I wanted to make out of it and you guys gave me some wonderful suggestions and I definitely have bookmarked some of those patterns for later but for now I decided to try to um, utilize what I already have so I looked through my stash and I came up with the Helen's Closet Reynolds top so I've made the dress before, which is on the dress form behind me, and I really love that dress. It's actually one of my favorites. So I decided to make the top version because I never actually made that before, and when I looked at the fabric requirements, um, it does only require one yard in my size for the, um, for the cropped version. 
and you can get it out of 44 inch wide fabric. So I'm like, well, that's perfect. So last night I actually cut out a test version out of a scrap of this fabric from the dress that I'm actually wearing. I had a little bit under a yard left, but it's a really wide fabric. So I was easily able to put the pieces on that piece of fabric. And the reason I wanted to do a test version first is because there's some issues with the sizing of that one. So the first time that I made the Reynolds dress, I went by the guidance that you're supposed to select a size based on your high bust measurement. And so my high bust measurement was a size four and my full bust was a size two. So I made the size four and then did a small bust adjustment uh, to get the, the, the chest size that I needed. And I actually think that that ended up being a little bit too big. I think that for whatever reason, that conventional wisdom doesn't really work for me because I find most of the time that my full bust measurement fits my shoulders just fine. It's not like I'm wider and broader at the top and I need a bigger size up here. It's just for whatever reason, I'm like bigger just right here. So I, I don't know but why that is, but I think that I made an incorrect sizing choice the last time around. So I wanted to just make the straight size two. And then I also have found wearing that dress that the straps are a little bit too long. I do think that I'm discovering that I am short from my shoulder to my chest. Like this area is petite but from the chest to the waist, it's actually slightly long because most of the time bodice pattern pieces are the right overall length. Like they fit me at, they hit me my natural waist, but I think that the proportions are actually a little bit off. So for the, the top that I'm working on, I shortened the straps, but I added that length at the lengthen and shorten line so that the overall length is the original length. Because if I had just shortened the straps, then the top would be too short, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna do the test, sew that up, see if I need to make any further adjustments because I really want it to be um, correct and have everything the way that I want it to fit before I cut into my gorgeous Rifle Paper Company fabric. But that is my plan, is to make that test garment. Hopefully that test garment will be wearable, but even if it's not, then I can move on to making my real version. So now on to the discussion topic, which I think is gonna be a little bit of a fun one. So I was watching a video by Making Cassie, and I think the video was called something like Is Sewing Becoming Fast Fashion or something like that. I will link the video in the description box. And it was a really interesting video. Um, Cassie was talking about how, you know, she's watching these videos on YouTube or TikTok or whatever where people are like, you know, can I sew a whole vacation wardrobe in one day or can I make five things in an hour or I don't know, but just kind of things like that. And she was kind of lamenting that, you know, sewing your own garments is kind of becoming this fast fashion factory, but like we're the factory. And um, I watched, as I was watching her video, like I felt attacked. I mean, not really. Of course, I don't think she was personally attacking me, but I know that I do produce a lot of garments per month. And in fact, in June, I made so many things that I'm going to have to actually break up my makes into two videos. Otherwise, it'll just be super long. Um, so that is coming in future videos. But I, I know that I make a lot of things, but I do think that there's reasons behind it. So the first reason is that I have the time to sew. This has not always been the case and I'm sure it won't always be the case, but right now for my life, the way that it is right now, I have a reasonable amount of free time and I spend that time sewing. I used to spend that time knitting, but if you're new to my channel, um, I am or was an avid knitter, but I have some problems with my hands and so I can no longer knit for hours and hours at a time. My fingers will swell up and I can't use my hands for a while. So um, I don't knit as much anymore and I've kind of replaced that with sewing. So the end result of that is that because sewing is a faster hobby than knitting, I end up with a lot of clothes. But I will say that I don't think, and some of the points that Cassie had made in her video was that when you're trying to sew quickly that you're not doing a good job, you're not being like thorough or anything. I am the first person to hold up my hand and say, I am not a couture sewist. I don't care as much about lining everything or finishing off all my seams with French seams or flat felt seams. I don't care that much about the insides of my garments. But I also am not at the other end of the spectrum. I don't, you know, I always finish my seams. Usually I serge them. I feel like I do take a decent amount of time with my garments and that they're good quality. They're just not top quality and that's okay with me. So I don't necessarily think that the things that I make are sloppy is what I'm saying. I think that I'm kind of average. I'm in the middle as far as my standards for the quality of sewing that I produce. 
And even if I did take the time to finish every single seam beautifully, I really honestly don't think that it would take me that much longer to make things. You know, it's not like if I were making a t the Reynolds top, you know, if I French seamed everything and made it all perfect, maybe that would add a few more hours, but I would still be producing a lot of clothes in the end because it wouldn't take me that much more time. You know what I mean? The other thing that I wanted to mention is that I feel like slow sewing can have its downsides too. Not that I don't think that you should be mindful and careful and do the best job that you can, but at least for me, when I take that extra time and I want to make everything as perfect as it can be, I can definitely cross the line into getting obsessed with, with perfectionism. Kind of like with my story with the shorts, where like the hem stitching wasn't perfectly even, and so I decided that it needed to be perfect, and then I ended up cutting a hole in my shorts. Whereas if I had just left it, it would have been functionally fine and it's on the inside of my leg and I don't wear these outside of the house. Who's really gonna care what it looks like? You know what I mean? So I do feel like, at least for me, there's a fine line between wanting to take my time and do the best job that I possibly can and just getting totally obsessed with making everything perfect and then restitching the same seam over and over and over again. And that can kind of make me crazy. So I need to find that balance in between those two things. And so yes, I do produce a lot of garments per month. And I've been thinking a lot lately about what that means as far as storage and do I have time to wear all these clothes and where I'm gonna store all these clothes. I am actually getting very close to running out of hangers. I've been debating buying more hangers. I've been trying not to do that, but the problem right now is that I'm at the point where I've weeded out my closet, I've taken out all the things that don't fit, the things that I don't think I'm gonna wear, and I genuinely love everything that is in my closet. I don't want to get rid of more stuff just for the sake of getting rid of it. So I'm kind of in that place where it's like, well, what do I do now? Like, technically I have the space, I could buy more hangers. I'm like telling myself that like, no, this is the last one. This is the last batch of hangers I'm gonna buy. Um, but yeah, like, you know, it's, it's gonna be a continuing issue of like, if I continue to make more stuff, I like all my stuff, I don't wanna get rid of old things, then like, what do you do? Because you're gonna run out of space and you're gonna have too many clothes. And that is something that I do struggle with all the time. The other question that I get sometimes, not so much from people on social media, but definitely in my real life, people have asked me these questions of, of like, what do you do with all those clothes? Like, I have so many clothes that I've made. And the answer is, I wear them, but I probably don't wear my clothes as frequently as other people do. So you know that like made up statistic that you hear all the time that usually goes something like, you only wear 20% of your clothes 80% of the time or something like that. Well, I was never like that. Even before I made my own clothes, I pretty much always wore all the things in my closet. It's just that I don't wear each individual garment a lot. Like there's nothing in my closet really that I wear multiple times a week or even like multiple times a month necessarily, but I do wear everything. It's just that it takes me a really long time to get through all of my clothes. So every garment that I make perhaps gets fewer wears per year. And the hope is that over time, eventually they will get the love and the wears that they've deserved for all of the time and the energy that I put into it. They're gonna last a long time. That's my desire anyway. The last thing that I wanna talk about in this discussion point is about sewing and mental health. So I sew or I craft just generally because I feel compelled to. I have gone through periods in my life where I haven't done any sort of crafting and in those periods, I would say it was a pretty dark place in my life where I was just very depressed. And if I don't have something to do, if I don't have that creative outlet, I do feel like I get really depressed. So I need to make things. But yeah, that's the problem, right? It's like you make things and then you don't need to make anything anymore and then what do you do? My only thinking is that like, well, I could switch to hobbies that are slower where you don't produce as much. Like I could go back to quilting, for example. It takes a really long time to make a quilt. Um, you know, knitting is a slower hobby, although I did have the same problem with knitting when I was knitting all the time. I produced all of these things that I never wore. Like one day I should just have a video where I show all of my shawls and scarf collection that like I never wear any of them, but I have like 30 of them that I've made. Um, but yeah, like that's the thing is that right now sewing is what inspires me. It's what makes me really excited. I'm learning new things with sewing. It's not that I don't feel like that there's nothing else I can learn with knitting or quilting, but just right now that's what I'm really interested in. So um, I don't necessarily want to go back to a different hobby that just, just because it takes longer. Um, so yeah, I don't know what the solution is for that. I, 
I sew because I get a lot out of it. I also do enjoy wearing the clothes. I think for me, it's less about the product and more about the benefits that it gives me mentally and emotionally. Um, that's what I get out of sewing and I don't really want to stop. So I am really interested to hear from you guys in the comments. How do you find that balance? How do you balance the need to create and to do something with your hands and like, you know, dig into projects that really engage your mind versus collecting too many things perhaps? And what do you do with that? <laughs> Do you start making more things for other people? I have actually recently been starting to think about that more, sewing more things for my husband, um, sewing more things for family. But yeah, like I would really be interested to hear your thoughts and feelings about sewing as potentially being this fast fashion problem or contributing to the fast fashion problem and how you balance that out with your own need for creativity. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that you took time out of your day to watch my video and I will see you again next time.